Hey everyone, so this video I'm going to be talking about the BexCat1 CPU design. In the previous video I looked at the overall system architecture and so now I'm going to be drilling into the CPU itself. The CPU was inspired in part by the 68000 and the opcode formatting is, is fairly similar. Um, you should, if you're familiar with that chip, you'll, you'll see some uh, from familiar uh, bits as we go through this. It has a 32-bit data and address path. It's uh, RISC-like with 16 general purpose registers. I've also implemented a single precision floating point core. Uh, it has several different uh, addressing modes, uh, direct, indirect, indexed, PC relative, and uh, immediate. Uh, it isn't pipelined at the moment. Uh, but uh, it's one of, that's one of the projects I'm thinking about doing fairly soon. Uh, it has a byte addressable bus, so the, the addressing that is going out that 32 bits is actually um, uh, individual bytes. Uh, those memory accesses actually support 8, 16, and 32-bit word lengths uh, based on that, uh, that bit mask that gets get pushed out. So uh, I'm showing the, a couple of boards here. The, the first one is the uh, uh, DE2i150, which is the core board that I use for a lot of stuff. Um, it's it's kind of overkill for this project, but it is really nice because it has a ton of internal memory, and so it, it makes it easier to use the uh, signal tap uh, logic analyzer, um, unlike some folks. And probably against best practice, I uh, don't really simulate much. I have a tendency to just go right ahead and uh, build it out in, in uh, hardware and then you know iterate as needed. And that's worked out actually fairly well for me, though I'm sure that there's some cases that uh, it, it isn't, like I said, best practice for folks who are doing this uh, kind of in their day-to-day. -day. There are other boards that can do this. In fact, this is the Max 10 Lite board, which is um, very inexpensive for what it is. Uh, it's got some SD RAM and uh, you know a little bit of I/O, and then a fairly beefy Max 10 FPGA, and uh, uh, has the VGA output and so forth. And so I've actually ported the um, the system uh, to this board as well. I've adapted it a bit, uh, made it a little bit smaller. Uh, the VGA interface is a tiny bit different. Um, there's fewer peripherals, obviously, and so forth. So, uh, but the CPU core easily fits in this, and uh, uh, I've been able to run some some basic tests. The biggest weakness that this board has relative to the um, the DE2i is because of the limited memory on the chip, I can't fit quite as much of the uh, ROM logic in place as I might like. So aside from that though, uh, and that's something that's certainly fixable, this uh, board works pretty well. So this is a block diagram of the CPU itself. We've got um, a register uh, selection mux uh, going into the register file. Uh, there's a um, control signals, the write address, the A and the B read addresses because it can simultaneously uh, write uh, one register and read to a, a register sim uh, at, at the same time. There's a helper uh, uh, latches A and B which allow me to take the output of the register file and uh, latch it for additional cycles, clock cycles, uh, later on and still be able to operate on the uh, register file. So that's a bit of a convenience and I think sets the stage for some pipelining stuff that I want to do later. Uh, from there, you've got uh, several logical uh, blocks here. Um, integer uh, multiplication, division, and so forth is is handled by um, you know, logic blocks uh, that Altera provided, and I just, you know, kind of wired it up. Uh, likewise, with single precision floating point, the FPU module, uh, as well as the uh, floating point uh, uh, comparator and, you know, uh, essentially uh, control register logic, 
Um, so that's what the CCR is. And then a uh, an ALU that uh, I built from, you know, base logic. Uh, all of these uh, take, you know, A and B as as uh, their inputs, and then uh, they the the um, data register, the MDR, actually latches the output of whichever one of these makes sense. So it's it uh, um, it's a muxed input, and then uh, you know the MDR is output. And then at the far bottom down here, this is the bus interface that um, interacts with uh, the MDR to push data onto the bus and then takes bus input uh, to load into the MDR. And that's the element that actually does all of the 8, 16, and 32-bit, um, you know, byte lane shifts as, as needed. Here's just a quick flavor of the uh, list of opcodes that are available. Uh, this is actually a Google spreadsheet and uh, is available to the to the world for for reading. So I've I've got it uh, up there. I'll post a link, but uh, it gives you a flavor of the different opcodes. And the biggest thing you you want to capture from this is that uh, a the um, the the formatting of the the bits in the opcode itself aren't as efficient as they probably could be. There's a lot of dead space for for several of these things. It doesn't really need 32 bits, but with the goal of having as many uh, opcodes uh, 32 bits wide as possible um, from a, an efficiency perspective and not having to pick around where the values were, uh, I kind of sacrificed the, the uh, dead space um, for convenience. Theoretically, I could probably uh, reduce and compact the instruction set by making some of these opcodes 32 bits and then loading what amounts to two at a time uh, where, where needed, but I, I didn't uh, implement any of that. Uh, the other thing is the type field, which is just a handful of bits inside the, um, the, the structure. It's, there's four bits that are, that are set that set the type, those are to keep track of what kind of opcode it is, and that's the primary path, uh, the primary selector, rather, um, that is used in the state machine to determine what happens at, at uh, execution phase. So inherent, push, pop, move, uh, ALU, etc. Okay, so this is the signal tap to uh, output of the CPU. What I thought I would do is just walk you through the um, control logic for a simple operation. And the one that I've chosen here is just an add. So it's in this particular case, it's taking two registers, um, register zero and register one, and putting the result of the addition in register two. So you can see um, in the alias column there, there's a 0, 1, 2. Those are the register numbers. You can see IR is the instruction register, PC is the program counter, uh, some other things that we don't really care about. But uh, a, right above the program counter, there is the CON0 state. That's the core state machine for the CPU. And you can see SFETCH, SEVAL, etc. Those are the actual states themselves. So once it gets out of uh, exception mode, like um, you know at boot time and it sets the program counter and so forth, the first uh, state is fetch. And what fetch does is it uh, initiates a bus cycle, uh, puts the PC onto the address bus, and um, marks as the input of the bus, the data bus, to be going into the instruction register. And so you can see uh, psych zero, which uh, again, this is all based on the wishbone standard, uh, signals that the uh, a bus cycle is, is beginning. And when it's complete uh, in cycle three, ACK I uh, goes high. And that's the signal from the bus controller, in this case, uh, the SDRAM uh, and cache controller, that it uh, is complete and the, the result has been um, effectively presented 
And so that is the signal for the system to go increment the program counter, which you can see that it does, and then move to the eval uh, state. Eval uh, looks at the first, well, the topmost uh, four bits and determines what kind of operation it is. Since this is an ALU operation, it goes to the ALU state next. Uh, in, that, in, in that situation, it actually loads the, um, uh, the values from the two addresses that are in the opcode. In this case, it is uh, 0 and 1 and latches those register uh, values into the uh, temporary registers A and B. Uh, once that's done, it goes to uh, ALU2 uh, state, and it actually runs the operation. And the result is available uh, one phase later, which uh, one, one clock cycle later, uh, ALU4. and in ALU4 is when it actually goes and tells um, it takes the the registered output of the ALU and puts it into the MDR. Finally the ALU4 state it transitions to the MDR2RA state which is when the MDR uh, moves it, its contents into it writes to the register that is in the first position in the uh, opcode, which in this case is, is uh, register 2. And so you can see at, uh, at state, uh, or at clock cycle 9, if you take a look at the value of uh, register 2, you can see that's when uh, it, it changes result, and it clearly is the sum of 0 and, and 1. Uh, and then after that, uh, uh, MDR2RA state, it goes back to the fetch and it goes and starts another bus cycle to, to take the next opcode. So that's that's basically the, the, the process. Obviously with some opcodes there are quite a uh, few additional cycles including bus cycles, um, push and pop operations, uh, you know, branching operations and so forth. Uh, and so the challenge uh, that I'm going to have when I uh, am looking at uh, pipelining this is to actually break these out into uh, separate phases so that I can um, minimize the amount of interactions so that I can have regular bus cycles that are doing fetching um, you know almost every you know one or two clock cycles now given this is uh, there's almost a minimum three clock cycle uh, interaction because of the way I've done the wishbone uh, bus, I may need to look at um, effectively pipelining that wishbone uh, bus uh, as well before I can really do that and then deal with uh, bus stalls and essentially getting the stall signal from the, um, the cache controller as a way to delay um, moving through the through the different phases, but uh, you know that's that's the adventure. That's the first adventure with pipelining, and then the second is going to be dealing with all the hazards that this is going to introduce. But uh, you know that's that's the that's the problem for the another uh, another day, I suppose. So hopefully that gives you a, a at least a high level overview and, and allows you to kind of look through the the code. Um, the module that has all of the data path muxes and, and, and things is actually the top level uh, BEXCAT2 uh, module. And uh, within that, there's instantiations for the ALU, uh, the floating point unit, the floating point comparator, uh, the integer uh, calculation register files, as well as control2, which is the state machine that handles all of the control signaling. And that is the, the heart of, of this whole thing. So hopefully this was useful. Uh, feel free to send me a note if you have any questions. And uh, I'll talk to you in the next video.